Ranging from 90 to 100 million viewers, the Super Bowl is one of the most watched TV programs every single year. With this much attention, it's an extremely valuable economic event. An estimated 20 to 25 billion dollars changes hands over this three hour football game. So where's all of this money going? Who is it coming from and who is it going to? Who are the economic winners and losers of the big game? In this video, we'll discuss the mind blowing economics of the Super Bowl. We'll discuss the insane amount of money involved with the TV rights and ads, the halftime show, Super Bowl parties, and betting on the game. We'll also discuss the insane costs involved with attending the game as well as building the stadiums that host, and lastly, how much the players get paid for playing. The TV rights for NFL games are worth billions of dollars per year. In 2020, 7 out of the 10 most watched TV programs in the US were NFL games, but the number one most watched program is always the Super Bowl. If a network wants the rights to televise the Super Bowl, they have to pay a large price. However, they can't just buy the rights to this one game. They have to buy a full package that includes games across the whole season. The NFL has recently signed a new 11-year deal with five different networks, CBS, NBC, Fox, ESPN slash ABC, and Amazon that may be worth over $10 billion per year. Under this agreement, CBS will pay $2.1 billion per year in order to broadcast Sunday afternoon games as well as three Super Bowls. NBC will pay $2 billion per year for Sunday night football as well as three Super Bowls. Fox will pay $2.25 billion per year for Sunday afternoon games as well as three Super Bowls. ESPN slash ABC will pay $2.7 billion per year for Monday night football as well as two Super Bowls. Lastly, Amazon will pay $1.5 billion per year for Thursday night football, but it will not be broadcasting any Super Bowls. You might be thinking, billions of dollars to broadcast football games? How can they possibly make that all back? The answer is commercials, commercials, and more commercials. The top revenue stream for these networks is advertising, and it's extremely lucrative. During a regular season game, a 30 second commercial will cost anywhere from $300 to $700,000, depending on the specific date and teams playing. But the Super Bowl is no regular game. It's super. And so is the price for advertising. For last year's Super Bowl on CBS, the price of a 30 second commercial was around five and a half million dollars. And the network took in over $484 million in advertising revenue from 42 minutes of commercials. Those are large numbers, but they've gotten even larger this year. NBC is broadcasting this year's Super Bowl, and they've sold some ads for six and a half million dollars and some for seven million dollars, which is an all time high. They will probably surpass $500 million in ad revenue from this one game. So is it worth it for a company to invest six to seven million dollars for a 30 second commercial during a TV program that will see 90 to 100 million viewers? I'm really not sure, but I'm going to do a separate, more in-depth video comparing the costs and benefits of Super Bowl commercials. For this video, the point is that we shouldn't feel bad for these networks for shelling out billions of dollars per year in order to broadcast these games since they're making boatloads of money on ads. Next, there's the halftime show, which always has a huge name attached to it. Some of the biggest mainstream stars have played the Super Bowl halftime show, including The Weeknd, Maroon 5, Beyonce, Coldplay, Katy Perry, Bruno Mars, and Bruce Springsteen. Surely these stars get paid a lot of money to perform, right? Wrong. They get paid nothing. The NFL doesn't pay these artists to perform, but it does cover the production costs and expenses for putting on the show, which can range anywhere from $1 to $10 million. That number seems very high, but sometimes this budget isn't even enough to satisfy the artistic vision of these superstars. For example, The Weeknd spent $7 million extra for the 2021 Super Bowl halftime show. Talk about over the top. That's a crazy amount to spend on a 15 minute concert, but it may have been worth it for him to do due to all the extra revenue it would help accrue. Although these artists perform for free, they're not doing it for charity. There are huge financial benefits from playing this concert in front of an audience of 90 to 100 million people. Performing at the halftime show leads to more awareness and exposure for the artists, which leads to more streams and album sales and ticket sales, which leads to more money in their pockets. For example, Bruce Springsteen played the Super Bowl halftime show in 2009. He started selling tickets for his upcoming tour the day after, and that tour ended up making $156 million in revenue. After Bruno Mars performed, his album sales rose 92%, and after Beyonce performed, her album sales went up 59%. Having the artist perform for free apparently wasn't good enough for the NFL, as it tried to get artists like Katy Perry to pay for the opportunity to put on this show. Speaking of of this, she said, I don't want an asterisk by my name for playing the Super Bowl for the rest of my life. I want to be able to say I played the Super Bowl based on my talents and my merit, thank you very much. I'm sure many artists would pay for the opportunity to get that much exposure. Just look at how much companies pay for a 30 second commercial during the game. 
The Super Bowl is also great for the food and beverage industry. Many people attend Super Bowl parties, and a good party isn't complete without snacks and refreshments. Spending on Super Bowl parties makes up more than half of the total money spent related to the Super Bowl, and this number is growing every year. In 2014, estimated spending for food and beverages for Super Bowl parties was $12.4 billion. In 2016, this number rose to $15.5 billion, and in 2019, it dipped a little to $14.8 billion. Consumer spending is surely much higher this year due to inflation and rising food costs. However, inflation isn't affecting all food groups in the same way, as potato chips, avocados, and most vegetables have remained at a similar price level over the past year. The food category that's been hit the hardest by inflation over the past year is meat. Unless you're a vegetarian or a vegan, meat is going to be a staple at your Super Bowl party. What do vegans even serve at Super Bowl parties? It's beyond me. Or maybe beyond meat, but that stuff is disgusting. They don't want to kill animals, but they're fine with killing other people's appetites. You can't please everyone. The price of chicken wings is up anywhere from 14 to 26% compared to last year, and the price of steak is up 23%. Hamburger meat is up 17% from last year, and cocktail wieners and pork chops are up 7%. Maybe these huge increases in the price of meat have swayed more into going vegetarian this year, but that's probably not the case. Most football fans want a juicy steak or hamburger while watching the game, not a quinoa and black bean burger. Soft drinks have seen a good amount of inflation as well, as the prices are up anywhere from 6 to 12% compared to last year. Maybe just stick to water during the game. Water is underrated. Don't sleep on water. Don't forget about betting, and well, how could you with all of the sports betting commercials we see during every single NFL game? There is more money bet on the Super Bowl than any other sports game during the year, and this year's Super Bowl will be the most bet on sporting event in history. One estimate is that over 23 million Americans are going to bet a combined $6 billion on the game. So who is doing all of this betting? Surveys say younger people are more likely to bet on the Super Bowl than their older counterparts. According to a study done last year by LendingTree, 67% of millennials plan to make a bet, as does 60 62% of Generation Z, while just 26% of baby boomers will do so. I think the NFL might be breeding a nation of gambling addicts. I find it interesting that the league was always super against betting and said it would ruin the integrity of the game, but now that it's legal in 30 states, you can't watch an NFL game without seeing multiple commercials for different betting apps. It's definitely in the NFL's favor to get people addicted to betting, as more people watch the games when they bet on them. The Super Bowl is a better's paradise. There is a ridiculous amount of bets one can place, like the spread, money line, final score, length of the national anthem, coin toss, and player props like receiving yards. One downside of all this betting is that people will lose money. That's the way gambling works, the house always wins. Another downside is that this may lead to more people becoming addicted to betting. But here's one upside of all this betting. Now that it's legal in many states, these gambling losses will lead to extra tax revenue for those states. Hopefully the state governments will be able to do something productive with that money and not gamble it all away. If you decide you'd rather watch the game in person than on TV, that's going to cost you a small fortune. The least amount of money you could possibly spend for one person to attend this year's Super Bowl is around seven to eight thousand dollars. But if you're going to the Super Bowl, you're probably not going to cheap out. It's a once in a lifetime event for most. The cheapest tickets for the game are around six thousand dollars each. Better seats cost around ten thousand dollars, and the most expensive seats are around seventy-five thousand dollars. No, thank you. I think I'll stay home and watch on TV this time. Unless you live in Los Angeles, you'll probably have to fly there and back. Round trip airfare to LAX will be a minimum of $600 for the weekend, and the hotel will be at least $400 per night. Also, you're probably not going to the game alone, so if you're going frugal and spending seven dollars to $8,000 for one person, then you're spending at least $15,000 for two people. Quite the expensive weekend, huh? The Super Bowl takes place at a different location every year, and these stadiums are often extremely expensive to construct. This year's game is at the newly built SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles, which is home to the Chargers and Rams. This stadium happens to be the most expensive stadium in the NFL, and it's not even close. The construction cost was over $5 billion, which is almost three times more than the second most expensive stadium, Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas, which had a cost of around $1.9 billion to build. Lastly, there's the players pay for the big game. Like most professional athletes, NFL players get paid a ridiculously large amount of money per game. However, most get paid significantly less for the playoffs and Super Bowl. Players from the winning team get $150,000 and players from the losing team get $75,000. Still, they're making more money than many people make in an entire year in one night. So they're doing just fine, as long as they have good money management skills. So to sum it up succinctly, there's an estimated 20 to $25 billion changing hands as a result of this 
just one football game, and this number seems to be rising every year. Let's end with a quick rundown of some of the economic winners and losers from this event. For the winners, there's everyone involved with the NFL, including the owners and players. The TV networks, CBS, Fox, NBC, and ESPN slash ABC are also big winners as they're making a ton of money from commercials. Grocery stores and pretty much any food and beverage company should be making a lot of money from this game as well. Also, casinos will be raking in a lot of money from bettors who lose. And lastly, the halftime show performers are big winners. Even though they're not getting paid directly for putting on this short concert, there are huge financial benefits from playing in front of such a large audience. I'm not sure there are many losers from this event. I guess your average consumer is most affected by inflation and the price increases of food and beverages, but they're still eating. Probably the only big losers are the ones who lose money betting, or the companies that bet six to seven million dollars on a 30 second commercial that ends up flopping. That would be rough.